Every medium, be it audio, text or video, has its own unique characteristics. So when we are adapting content to a specific medium, we need to carefully translate, adapting towards the characteristics of the target medium. This general principle also applies when we adapt scientific content into a video-based format. Most scientific content originates from text. So your first challenge will be to accept that when transferring scientific content into a video-based format, this will somehow alter the original content. Science videos are never a copy of a finalized product. Rather, the film processes and also the media design interacts and transforms the scientific content in some ways. Whether this transformation makes the media representation of the science itself more accentuated or just distracts from it, is entirely in your hands when you start to produce science videos. Video is an incredible dense visual medium. It routinely leaves a deeper impression with the audience than any text-based research papers, policy recommendations or newspaper articles ever could. But there are also a lot of misconceptions about science videos. So let's first address them. Today in the early 20s, the majority of senior academics still remain blissfully ignorant of the power of the audiovisual medium continuing operating in a text-based fashion in their research and teaching. The academic discourse on science video also reveals a hidden hierarchy between images and words. So images are often described as, yeah, they're cool, they're amazing, they're beautiful, nice. But when you talk about words, they are referred as precise, stringent or conclusive. A common fallacy in science videos is to reduce the visual to a sole illustration of a pre-written text. The text dominates the narration and the visuals are added in a loose and non-meaningful way. Misconceptions about science videos are often deeply rooted in misunderstandings about how the medium works, how the characteristics can be used to tell stories. So one of the frequently repeated arguments is that videos can evoke strong emotions. While that's certainly true, it's not absent from text, making this argument less valid. But this fear of the emotions in videos needs to be addressed. So one of the often discussed concepts regarding applied media design is tested knowledge. It is true that filmmakers are capable to arbitrarily evoke strong stimulations. Emotions with images or sound design, possibly creating unintentional or misleading or even contradictory connotations. Being aware of this is crucial when you start your own science film. Science filmmaking needs a similar precise and reflective eye and mind as text writing. So when you start to produce your own film and use strong images to somehow visualize the key point of your research, always ask yourself, does this picture really depict what you want to show or is it somehow connotationally misleading to the audience? So at this point, let's dive a little bit deeper into the visual power and also how we can actually create aesthetic, meaningful images for science videos. 
There's a difference between a purely aesthetic staging of an image and a meaningful aesthetic staging. One of the contemporary examples are actually drone shots. You can find a lot of videos from universities where you see the campus, where you see a person walking over the campus doing something. I would consider these kind of images not really meaningful, but maybe aesthetically nice. But when we talk about aesthetically meaningful images, drone shots can also help to convey a key message, to really show some evidence, to show data, the process of a research project, somehow also give an other perspective on something. So the next time you plan to include a drone shot into your science video, think about how relevant is this shot really? Does it add something aesthetically because it's nice and cool or is it really meaningful for your project? The artistic approaches of audiovisual media design depends on the scientific context. When a complex terminology or concept is introduced, the art is in choosing the correct visuals so the concepts are intuitive but never ambiguous or misleading. Beyond the mere translation, the visual can also give evidence in its own right in forms that cannot be articulated in text. Images can make visual arguments, literally show the data or demonstrate evidence. Film as an epistemic instrument has a long history. As I have introduced into the science film and visualization strategies, also with potentials and fallacies, let me end by giving you some practical advice. Because in the end, science filmmaking is a practice and you can read all the books, but if you never practice it, you will not progress. So, first of all, when you start, always ask yourself, why is it a video? Do I have something to show? Or can I rather write a text? Always think about the characteristics or maybe only parts of the research project you want to show is suitable for a video-based format. Always pick this part out so in the end it's also kill your darlings. You cannot somehow tell the whole world in one video. The second advice concerns the actual image production for your science video. It concerns all three stages, the pre-production, production and post-production. Why do you want to show this particular moment or situation or object and in which way? Because each perspective you take will change the way people look at it. Why do you go so close or so far away? What kind of angle do you take? And this will literally represent how you look at something. Third. Ask yourself, are there any elements in my research where a visual approach could lead to new epistemic insights? Are you using the video to only illustrate the research or are you trying to use the film process to potentially generate new knowledge within the creative process? Find a team. Filmmaking is always best when you have a good team, especially when you're learning. You will need a lot of different skills and knowledge within the process. So be also prepared to go online and acquire new knowledge. There are a lot of amazing tutorials on almost everything out there for free, so just go there, do it. And last but not least, try to have a lot of fun, because filmmaking is also a lot of work, but it's really an amazing process if you start to dive into it and to work with other peers on your science videos.